Howdy, everyone. My name's Nicholas, and welcome to the Headliner Pod Pod. We're a show about podcasts featuring podcasts by podcasters that's hosted by people who help podcasters with their podcasting. On each episode, a few of us folks over at Headliner sit down to play a game that centers around listening to randomly selected clips from over 500 show submissions we've gotten from podcasters. Why? Well, in order to find what we call Pod Zero. Here are the rules. Each lucky contestant will hear a 60-second podcast clip. They'll then need to pick the correct podcast title from a lineup of three choices before being shown the artwork for that show. Before we get the show on the road, though, let's say hi to each of our contestants for today, starting with Oliver. Hey there, Nicholas. Next up, we have Pratik. I'm great. Thanks for asking, boss. Good. I'm living my best life. Next up, we have Pratik. Hey, everyone. Followed by Max. Hey, hey, headliners. Christy. Let's go. Jesse. Talking about dang old yo, man. <laughs> Bringing us a very King of the Hill intro. And Alyssa as our producer. Hi, everyone. Great. So, Alyssa, do you have a little ad read for us today? Oh, do I? Okay, let's take a second to talk about audiograms. Audiograms, it's what we're known for. They're simple, powerful tools every podcaster can make part of their pod motional plan. With Make by Headliner, you can create anything from full length to optimize audiograms for YouTube down to quick templatized clips you can simply text to loved ones. These powerful marketing assets can pack a serious punch too. Audiograms are video files. They outperform traditional text posts on social media platforms like X, Facebook, and LinkedIn. They truly excel at working their way into social algorithms as they exemplify best practice on these social platforms. What's even better is you can upload these audiograms into Eddy to automatically get captions, blog, or newsletter copy to to accompany these bad boys. So break the static quo and create audiograms as part of your pod motional plan. Incredible. Amazing. So many puns, so little time. We should rename that last sentence unmotional plan just because I you know I really try my best over here <laughs> clearly <laughs> all right with that out of the way let's dive into our game and let's get things started on the right foot by having Oliver up first the right foot yes that's closed yep oh my god what an interesting opener yeah right? Yeah. Wow. Dude, first of all, uh, when when Brian said the Smashing Pumpkins were opening for Blink uh, for a Green Day, I've seen the Smashing Pumpkins a few years, some years ago. Not good. Not good. <laughs> it was sad because like they were such a good band, but like most of the Great band isn't band. around with them anymore, and yeah. it was just everything was like all the music was angry. Like every song that was a hit, he just He's played angry. like. But um, but yeah, wow. Like interviews with him. They, yeah, but Green Day's Dookie, I'm, uh, this is one where, like, at first when I was listening to it, I was like, I don't know what's going to happen, but it's interesting. This happens to you a lot, Manny, where, like, we have conversations, and then all of a sudden, like, that, that little turn happens. Yeah. And then it's just like, huh. So, it definitely like, happened. I got to give it, I got to give it to Mark. All right. There was our clip. I'd just like to interject very quickly to remind everyone that the band's name was Smashing Pumpkins. I feel like being angry was just, like, it's kind of built into the name a little bit. But maybe I'm wrong there. On that note, yeah, here I have have to interject here myself, Nicholas. Um, my the first time I ever went to a concert by myself was the Smashing Pumpkins oh. at the Fleet Center in Boston in the much storied era, <laughs> and they were angry, and they even back then, and they did play their hit songs incredibly fast and angry. So that had to be something. I feel like 1979, if it's just played really fast, is a sight to behold. Well, I also have to interject to say that despite all my rage, I'm still just a rat in a cage. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Sad story. Oh, my gosh. Max did my favorite thing that people do, which is they read lyrics like completely deadpan. It's like my favorite thing. You can read any lyric completely deadpan and it becomes the funniest thing in the world to me. So I wasn't that. I wasn't trying to be deadpan for the record. Yeah, I know you weren't. (laughs) It's a condition. Oh, oh my gosh. (laughs) 
on that note, while we get Max immediate medical attention for dead Pania, the medical condition he has, here are your options for today, Oliver. Number one, the Nostalgia Test Podcast. Ooh. N- number two, OK Boomer Podcast with ah. William Joseph Armstrong. OK Boomer. And number three, Greener Days Podcast. I'm going to say no way Zoomer to OK Boomer, Alyssa. <laughs> <laughs> actually what is a zoomer can we get a fact check i don't know what that is a zoomer a... gen yeah. z yeah gen z. Okay. we you know had to take school online because of you know that whole <laughs> shutdown is that the the differentiator i think so okay i would know okay so throw out number b there's just no way that a boomer's sitting here talking about the pumpkins like that there's just no way yeah that's slanderous not a boomer band they're like a zenial i would say they're a zenial band so we're gonna throw that out so nicholas if you don't mind could we please hear option number a and option letter three (laughs) option number a the nostalgia test podcast And then option letter C, or three, so sorry, they sound similar. My brain's crossing wires. Greener Days podcast. Greener Days. The nostalgia test? Mm -hmm. I think that that might be the right one. Okay. Locking in. I saw a slight curl on a little smile, which makes me think I'm going to be wrong, but that seems like cheating. Number one, lock it in, Nicholas. A1, let's go. So A1 Sauce, the Nostalgia Test podcast, is correct. That's correct. You are 100% right. It is the Nostalgia Test. And the oh, other two were... I got it right. <laughs> oh. Speech, speech, speech. Give us an acceptance speech. <laughs> I'd like to thank Nicholas. I'd like to thank you for always laughing at our demise to motivate us. <laughs> You're so welcome. I'm so, I feel so seen right now. I do it for you guys, truly. (laughs) Yep, you are correct. The other two were woefully wrong. And they were also Green Day jokes because William Joseph Armstrong is Billy Joe Armstrong. It's not his real name. It's just the kind of elongated version. And Greener Day is obviously Green Day. So, yeah. The clip we just heard was from the 30th anniversary of Green Day's Dookie with Mark Jackson. And here's our description. Join longtime friends Dan and Manny as they put their mainstream pop culture past to the ultimate test, the nostalgia test. That's I like that. It kind of ends like a game theory video, but that's just a theory, you know? Okay. Neat. Game theory. Thank you, Jesse. I'm I'm glad someone finished it for me because I wasn't going to be that guy. <laughs> uh, I like the food theories more, but I digress. Yeah. Unsurprisingly, I like film theory more. Sure. There we go. Yeah, nobody is shocked by that. They're just like, yeah, this pans. Okay, jumping on forward. Let's just go right into the the next clip for today. Pratik, how you feeling? You want to go next? Let's do it. Cool. Yeah, am I suppose? Let's go. What I will say is, well, because, well, I think if I say I'm the main writer in the band, right. you know what I mean? But um, yeah, when, I, when I'm writing, um, I don't write thinking you know what an audience will think or whatever i just can't i'll pitch it to you guys and then you'll be like yeah right. add, you add your own things though obviously because i think if you're writing for an audience it can become you can overthink it quite a bit because mm-hmm. we've got a couple of solo songs that we've been writing and things like that uh, yeah. so which, awesome. which the crowd have quite liked as well do you know what i mean because a bit a bit of change of direction is good uh, mm-hmm. and certainly enough that we're no we're no set a specific sound yet so we can yeah, yeah true, but, okay, but i'll always mind just in the middle Seeing what works. Because mm-hmm. I think we're doing, yeah, because like songs we're all happy with, I think that's what we go with. Aye, definitely. Yeah. And all the process as well, which you'll do every acoustic demo in your, in your room and send it to me. All right. So, Pratik, here were your three options. Number one, this is the music. Number two, wait a minuet. Or is that wait a minute, Alyssa? I can't tell if that's supposed to be minuet or minute. No, no. I do spell those two wrong all the time. But no, it is intentionally spelled as minuet this time. Okay. 
I'm just checking because Google Drive was yelling at me saying that it was um, wrong. No, it's fair. It's fair. Cool. And number three, moving and grooving. What was the first one again? This is the music. Sorry, what was the second one? Wait a minuet. No, it's good you ask because I didn't want you to think that whole like that whole distraction at the end, all that like word salad was a part of the title. Right. <clears throat> Which one? The first one. First one, this is the music. This is the music. This is the correct answer, Pratik. Right. You got it right. Yeah. It was not wait a minuet or minute, Alyssa. Can you double check and let me know which? So what? sorry. No, I was saying that wasn't the oh. title. <laughs> I was like, this is right. I don't. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> yeah, the clip you just heard was from episode 99 entitled Quaint. And the description for the show is this is the music brings you insights and interviews from the best in new music. So cool stuff all around. I like how simple the artwork is for it. It looks like we just have a picture of the hosts on one side and then the logo for the show itself. It's clean. It's neat. Cool stuff. Also, maybe this is just my brain being my brain, but wait a minuet. I have to circle back on that. I love it because like the fact that the hosts have, I can't place the accent. Does anyone know what accent that was? It sounded Scottish to me. Yeah, I thought British, but <clears throat> probably British, Scottish. Yeah. Minuet, minute. It sounds like, I don't know. I feel like a Scottish person saying minute might actually sound like minuet. So just saying, I think that's, that was a clever title on Alyssa's part. Anyway. Thank you. Let's, you're welcome. Let's just jump on forward to our next contestant, Max, who has a little sticker of a corgi on the side of his screen. It's my little friend. All right, let's nice. do it. I'm sure you've discussed this with business leaders on your podcast, David, but combine that with the overlay of flexible work arrangements. And some folks may be old fashioned and may say, I don't think people, you know, should work at home when they're home. They're not doing anything but their laundry. So, you know, I like it the old fashioned way. Well, younger generations aren't going to stand for that. And so leaders, regardless of what generation they're in, have to recognize the challenges of being fair and biased, even though they may have particular points of view that are personal. Dude, this is also a great example where sort of the beauty of where police is coming from as an employment attorney and we're coming from, from a business psychologist, right? So I'm working with leaders and saying, yeah, the reality, this is the reality. I hear you. All right. There was our clip, Max. So here wow. are your three options for today. I just want Number to say one, that I'm literally doing my laundry right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, Oliver. we knew that. That's why you're going third, actually. No, I'm not joking. Like, literally, I put it in the wash right before this podcast. So why are you apologizing to me, Max? I think we heard it on the <laughs> show. Apparently, some <laughs> bosses don't let you to do don't, don't want you doing laundry while you're working at home. Well, I'm not some bosses, Max. And that's why we love working at Headliner. We get to do our laundry away. while working at home. We launder everything at this company. Nope. No, we don't. <laughs> Everything's... For no, legal man. reasons. This For legal is... reasons, we specifically mean sheets. Right. <laughs> what a Kodak moment. Okay. Here are your options, Max. <laughs> Number one. Somehow I manage with M. G. Scott. Number two, leadership without losing your soul. And number three, becoming a better leader. Okay, I really like the first one. I don't know if it is that one, but I'm going to vote for vote for the the for what I want to see in the world, as they say. So you're going with number one. Somehow I manage. I have yeah. a question, Max. Yes. Have you ever seen The Office? Yeah, big fan. Yeah. You know, like so, 10 you, times in a row. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to still vote for it. I don't, even though you're trying to convince me out. Okay. That's okay. So, that is good too, I guess. You are, you office are. Office reference. Yeah. You are incorrect, <laughs> sir. It is, it is. Somehow I manage is Michael Gary Scott's memoir he's working on in the show oh well 
I thought you were talking about this title. Well, that's why I wanted to be the title because I I love The Office. So yeah, it's just there my fandom go. permeating through, clouding my judgment. So subconsciously making you pick the wrong choice. The correct answer for real was leadership without losing your soul. And, um, yeah. yeah, business. Very... It's all supposed to be emotionless. My emotions get involved, and I, I messed up. So that's on me. That's okay. You know, it's a Thank learning you. experience for everyone. Somehow you manage, Max. Somehow. Yeah. Somehow. So <laughs> <laughs> the clip you just heard was from episode 245, Optimize Leadership Potential While Navigating the Complexities of a Hybrid Work Environment. And anytime a podcast has that many episodes, I just get a little scared because I just think about all of the episodes that exist there. I don't know. Does anyone get intimidated by that? How many episodes? 245. Like that's not that much relative to some other podcasts. Yeah. Aren't some I know. Like in the thousands I know. now or something. I just I think of the number of weeks. That's at least four years, maybe. So you got a huge backlog to go through if you check this podcast out. Anyway, here's our show description. It can feel like a rigged game. Managers face aggressive goals and drive their teams to burnout trying to deliver. Or Employees seek connection and support, so managers focus on relationships and fail to make the numbers. Join international best-selling leadership author David Dye for a conversation about practical leadership tools to help you get results without losing your soul or mind in the process. So, there you have it. Interesting, interesting stuff. Coming up next, let's go with Christy. Oh, okay, fine. Got a little bit of a Minnesota accent there for a sec. Okay, fine there. <laughs> Very cool. He's covering his face with a Zelda sticker pack. That was that blew. But yeah, that blew over in in a few months after everybody was convinced that it was a safe device. It sounds the rest like of history. Very much like politicians, regardless of one's politics. Pol politicians are pretty good at. <laughs> giving opinions without having knowledge of, of lots of different things. Well, that's a, that's exactly right. And I think Ralph was a little frustrated, but got amused by it all. And I think he anticipated it. So he had a good training program to run them through the, the whole, how the, the device worked and the safety features. I think that I've read in recent years, maybe it's more now that there are something like 60 to 70 technology features offered on, on a new car, unless it's a very base model of a vehicle. But many cars have 60 technology features. All right. There's our clip. Awesome. And here are your options. Number one, hit the Nas podcast. Number two, the weekly driver podcast. And number three, no clunker left behind podcast. Dang, they're all really good. I'm going to base my decision solely on my love for the Fast and the Furious franchise. Franchise. So number one, hit the Nas. Hit That's the Nas. Locking it, hit, 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 locking it in. Okay. Unfortunately, That's that okay. is incorrect. It's okay, hit me. <laughs> <laughs> I went in knowing that this was going to be wrong, but I liked it. I liked it okay. a lot. Word. No, it was the weekly driver podcast and good effort. You know, you got gumption in picking it. Yeah. It takes guts. Unfortunately, I can't give you too much credit because as Dom says in the Fast and Furious, you still lost. Yes. But also something, something, something family. Anyway, this is from the episode <laughs> Automotive Legend Ralph Teeter. And our show description is. The Weekly Driver podcast is an extension of theweeklydriver.com, online since 2004. That's all in caps lock. Imagine I yelled that into space. Christy, and... you have a bonus question, though. Yes, what? you can save face today. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. all right. <laughs> Where do you think they recorded that podcast? I think that they record. I was thinking about it, and I was thinking about the best way to explain it. It's like they're recording on a brand new Ikea table and a lot of glass. It's, it's, hmm. there is so much reverberation. There's so much like weird space inside of their space that it sounded just strange. 
Okay. Is, is there like a specific room or anything that you're envisioning with this as well? What's yeah, the, what's the it, prop it, situation in the room? Honestly, yeah. it's like, I think that there is a hung up glass picture of probably a very old, like, let's let's say like a diagram for like a, the original t car what was that a model called? t <laughs> yeah a model, a model t but it's it's definitely glass and like maybe a cheap plastic and it's just the table whatever they're on for some reason it's just screaming tan to me but tan and like a that a crappy gloss that you have on like ikea stuff that's it just sounds like it's reverberating everywhere okay can we just take a step back and ask is the glass you're hearing potentially a windshield? And are they recording this in their car? They are not <laughs> recording this in their car. It would sound so much smaller. It's in a large, such a larger space. <laughs> like an open floor plan type deal? Yeah, open floor plan. Okay. It just reminds me of like the old of like old startup company offices where it's everyone working in like a space and like but everyone's out on lunch and it's a, just a huge lots of plastic, lots of glass, lots of gloss. That's where it seems like to me. Back when you couldn't do your laundry while working. Exactly. Terrible time. You could. You just had to be really efficient about it, Max. You or had to have like nice a washboard under your desk and everything. <laughs> well, there was a reason I asked because they had, oh, not that. They did have a picture of them recording and how okay, they Okay, were... let's see it. Let me see it. Oh, can you not see it? Oh, I can see it. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> See lots of glass, open space. Yeah. Okay, Hung glass they, even. Okay, so I glass. the the table I got wrong. Mm -hmm. It's marble. That's what I'm hearing. Yep. The color was right though, and the hanging yeah. glass. Yeah, you were it, right about I, a picture being on the wall. It it was right about it being team. in a room. Yeah. <laughs> it's I, you're mistaking marble for glass is just really starting to. You need to you need to get better at that. Headliner needs yeah. you some accuracy I, on this. I it's, <laughs> I was it felt like I was hearing something like really reverberating reverberating, and all I could think about was like a really crappy IKEA table. But you're absolutely right. You could be recording just in your kitchen, and that like that one girl that I talked about like episodes episodes back. I feel like I nailed that one where it was like. Uh, <laughs> The marble table is something I have to like keep in mind that people do have those. Yeah, they are fairly popular. Also, mm -hmm. I'd just like to say Christie's views of Ikea don't reflect my views. If anyone at Ikea wants to give me money to talk about it on the show, I am available and desperate, <laughs> desperately available even. So moving on, let's let's just jump over to Jesse, who looks about ready and very festive with his background today. Very Stranger Things-esque. Yes. Celebrating Leap Day. Okay. <laughs> so a couple of days later, Mike withdrew the money, but went straight to the saloon in Douglas and spent the money there. So obviously when Nick finds out about this, he's not happy and he tracks Mike down and that's when he took his revenge. So Mike was probably walking out of the saloon and this is how I picture it anyways. And Nick is just waiting for him and then just walks up behind him and shoots up. So he'd had enough. And so, of course, Nick was booked on a murder charge and was held without bail. It's kind of gruesome to not even confront him again. Exactly. Like, give it one more chance. Because maybe he just spent a couple dollars in there and you could get at least some of your money back. And then but... shoot him in the back. And shoot him in the back. Exactly. Yeah. Which makes me wonder earlier when I was talking about, like, he does this caring gesture. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't very caring. That's just how I want to picture it. But <laughs> it seems like he said it's brutal. It's a brutal way to do that. So a few days after the shooting on January 4th, Mike was buried at the Douglas Cemetery. All right. There was our clip. In case it needs stating, I am not the Nick in the story. Thank you, promise. And here are your choices for today, Jesse. Number one, Italian American Stories podcast. Number two, Red, White, and Green, the stories that made us. And number three, from pastas to pies, Italian Americans thrive. Man, it's just like life's made up of a bunch of choices, you know, man. And each choice you make, dang all makes you, man. And I'm just going to pick number two. Number two, red, white, and green, the stories that made us. I, I swear I saw you writing down. I saw you crunching the numbers on this one, man. 
I tried. <laughs> Fair enough. That is incorrect. It was actually Italian American Stories podcast. So sorry. Dang old man. Wait, um, <laughs> As the resident Italian American on this podcast, I would take the moment to say, Madonna. There you go. And what we just listened to was from episode 17, the New Year's Eve murder of Mike DeFino. Here's our show description. A podcast that rediscovers the forgotten stories of Italian Americans in the newspapers of the past. So there you have it. That's a really interesting premise for a podcast. I mean, it makes me just imagine they're picking random newspaper clippings and just like doing some good old fashioned research into it. I don't know. I don't know if this is like a well-known murder case or something. So, yeah, unless anyone has anything to add there, perhaps calling me out on being horribly wrong about something. I don't know. Full art. I like the art. It's pretty. Yeah, it's, it's good art. It's very artful. On that note, let's just chug along to the part where everyone teams up and tries to figure out one more, you know, podcast clip. At one point, I remember he just seemed broken. And it was just, I don't know what's going to happen. Like, you know, my dream is going to blow up and smokes and I have, I can't do anything about it. We lost 80% of our clientele like that due to what happened. And I was able at that time, I built my business within Trenant pretty quickly, pretty fast. Had some had really great leaders and we were making, I I'd made at that point, I was making around six figures a year. And so it was a very humbling moment for me to just be able to tell my husband, babe, I I got like, whatever is going to happen, you just need to know what I've been able to create. I got us. And, and so it taught me how the importance of having a plan B before you need a plan B. I didn't know the world was going to shut down. I didn't know these things were going to happen. I didn't know the importance of second streams of income, third streams of income. It wasn't even a part of my thought process. Okay. So there was our clip and here were your options. Number one, interrupted. Act two, reinventing your legacy. Number two, don't call it a comeback podcast. And number three, kicking life's butt podcast. Number three. Who's with me? Let's do it. Number three. No, let's, let's do it. I don't know. Wait, hold on let's a minute. Number it. three. <laughs> what? What? Just like guys, it. if we no just read number again. three that easily, we won't be producing content for our podcast. Let's have a discussion at least. I feel like this podcast has a fair amount of content to be fine. Number three, <laughs> go with three. I've said my well, debate. Let's let's talk about it. Let's let's get ideas into the world. Enough with the debates. Number three, right? <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about why do we all feel like. Choosing number three. Well, now it's turning into therapy, Max. Well, he, he, here's and let's do more content. Why don't he or say say them again, and then sure. we'll all cheer on oh, how okay. we feel about him. Yeah, okay? let's do like an applause meter sort of. We'll thing. do an applause meter. So say the first one. All right, Alyssa, do you want to be the applause meter or should I? Oh, let, yeah, let's team up. They're teaming up. We'll okay. team up. Yeah, we'll both be the applause meter. Okay. So, number one, interrupted. Act two, reinventing your legacy. Boo. Oh, okay. this is... Boo. Boo I heard a boo in there. <laughs> I was saying boo earns. Okay. Well, well I enthusiasm boo. for that. I'll own it. Thank you, Christy. <laughs> I think we knew, but thank you. <laughs> the show the show is slowly entering, like everybody's becoming a hater gradually over time on this. First it was Max, then it was me. Now it's Christy. Number two, we need, some, we need some balance. We need the Simon Cowell. We need the Paula. <laughs> I forgot the other guy, Randy. Yep, Randy. Is, are these people even exist on the show anymore? This is like from 2000. I haven't watched Simon does. No Simon's dog. still there. Okay. Number two, don't call it a comeback podcast. Hey. Ooh, yay. Okay, well, I'm, I'm not going to even do the applause meter, guys. You blew it. <laughs> Number three. Jessica was muted. <laughs> I was. I, I blew it. <laughs> Number three, kicking life's butt podcast. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. Woo. Incredible. 
what I'm getting from this is that that old tactic at school assemblies where kids don't clap and then the person's like, I can't hear you actually works. Oh, yeah. Because it was only after I called it out that you guys clapped. Okay. <laughs> so it sounds to me like y'all actually do want to pick kicking life's butt. Yeah. I don't know what two means to you, but this is what three means to me. Word, man. <laughs> So on that note, Kicking Life's Butt podcast is incorrect. I'm glad y'all didn't go for the LL Cool J lyric, but the correct uh, answer was interrupted act two, reinventing your legacy. That <laughs> makes a lot more sense now that I see it written. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how about that? It makes yeah, a lot more is... sense now that I'm, I know how wrong I was. So Have a visual aid. Yeah. <laughs> My, my sincerest apologies for booing. I was boo so which is good. Okay. On that note, everybody, this was from episode 49, Empowering Women Physically, Mentally, and in Business with Katrina Jensen. And our description is a long boy. So everyone sit down, help yourself to a beverage. And I'm just going to go at this like it's the end of a medical infomercial. Reinvent Act 2, Life After 60. Are you feeling like a has-been? Like all the life-fulfilling things are behind you and you're missing out? Do you wonder if people will remember you and your legacy? Are you afraid you missed the boat and have some regrets? Wishing you were brave enough to do that thing, live that dream, but now it's just too late? You are too old? Good news! Hi there, I'm Lori, and I felt the same way. It seemed like life was passing me by. I was a single mom raising three kids on my own, making decisions that were good for the family, but not in line with the dreams I held. Doing what was right to support them. I, su I struggled with depression and feeling like my good life was over. I was over 50 when my youngest graduated high school, and I thought I missed out on everything. Now what? I reinvented my dream, told a friend, and started walking in the direction I was terrified of, and boy, did I get a lot of no's. I persevered, and you can too. First feared because I listened to people who had overcome challenges, rediscovered their purpose, found fulfillment after 60, started over, created their act two, embraced change and new beginnings. Thank you to those who are brave enough to share so we would have hope and believe a possible future filled with joy. You'll even hear some brave souls get coached into their act two. Grab your coffee or tea and that beautiful journal you just bought to secretly think about your dreams and get ready to go for a ride. I'm talking to lots of people just like you who are in their second act of life made big changes, reinvented themselves, creating a life they love. It is so doable, and they are going to have to share how they did it. I just know you are going to be encouraged and maybe even come up with a plan for your act, too. And exhale. Dang on. Okay. Man. Yeah, there you have it. Interesting podcast art. I'm a, a sucker for a good, simple chat bubble for a cover. I think it says everything it needs to. And yeah, sounds like an interesting podcast for sure. On that note, that was our last clip for today. Good job. I feel like we got a higher ratio of y'all guessing it right than usual. I wasn't actually keeping score. I should start doing that. At any rate, thanks for playing, everybody. And thanks to everyone for listening. We'll be back with another episode soon. And I hope y'all have a great day. So yeah, bye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.